Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. The podcast which now has a name, Slightly Warped. Boy, does that describe us to a T. Right on the head. Hit the nail on the head. I'm Rick, along with Big Show. What's up, Show? What's happening? How are you? Missed you the last couple of weeks. Hey, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm, the important thing is you're doing good because, you know, that COVID is no joke. Yeah, it, it, it knocked me down for the count. Uh, went out to a wedding in Oklahoma City uh, about a month ago and mm. come to find out they had a COVID outbreak there. There was a lot of people oh, had wow. it. So I'm assuming that's where I got it. You know, I'm fully vaccinated and all that and still hit me hard. So two but, things we can take away from it. One, glad you're doing better now. Very glad because it could be so much worse. And speaking yes, of, the other thing is because you were vaccinated, I strongly believe that that's why it didn't hit you as hard as it could have. I agree. Yeah, it is definitely good to uh, have you back. And like I was saying at the top of the show, for everybody listening, you're going to see over the course of the next few weeks, uh, new intro music, uh, new graphics, because it's a new title, Slightly Warped. We, we are still, you know, taking news and tidbits and putting it out there in podcast form, but we, we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to try to have even more fun with it a lot more laughs, and, and not take things so serious. We'll see how that turns out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I preface that with this unscheduled thing. This was not on our list, but uh -oh. I, I ran across it today. This is cognac for our fine alcohol lovers. It's called Louis the 13th Cognac. Do you know how much this stuff costs? I can imagine. Oh, I want to uh, hear you guess. Not well. It's is, the fact that you're asking for, me. This is for a, like a this is for a 750 milliliter bottle. Well, the fact that you're asking me, you're probably is going to cost close to as a family trip to the Star Wars facility. <laughs> you're you are not somewhere, wrong. You're somewhere not wrong. in that arena. It costs four thousand ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Good lord! If you get it online, it can be upwards of ten grand if you were to purchase it at an actual restaurant per bottle. Ten grand at a restaurant? Yes. So you can get it in shot form, anywhere between three to eight hundred dollars per shot. Mm -mm. Now, I don't mind partaking in the odd uh, beverage every now and then, but there is no way in hell I'm paying four grand for any bottle of alcohol. And if I became a millionaire now, my wife would slap the tar out of me for buying a $4,000 bottle of alcohol. So it's not going to happen. I don't think there's any beverage that I'm going to pay that much for. <laughs> no, no, no. No, Unless, no not. food, nothing. If I can't drive it for $4,000, yeah, no. No. Now, if it's a cup of diamonds, that's different, but not a beverage. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I saw that, and it, it kind of blew me away. Well, I'd be good anyway because I don't drink, so. We're good. I wouldn't have to worry about that aspect. You know, I'm, I'm slowly getting to be that way uh, out of not necessarily necessity, but as I'm trying to get more physically fit, I'm trying to cut a lot of the bad stuff out, uh, the, the sugars um, and the alcohols. Um, I'm doing pretty good with alcohol. I still struggle with sugar, but it is still a work in progress. I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm a, <clears throat> I'm crazy as it is. I don't need alcohol to add to it. So, <laughs> Okay, so check it out. There was a TikToker online who showed how easy it was for employees to spy on you during the workday. And I, I forget where she worked, but that, that's neither here nor there because I started to think about it. And I'm like, 
Yeah. I mean, all they have to do is sit around there pretending to work and they can follow you around the store. They can, you know, listen in if you're on the cell phone on your conversations. So it is not that uncommon or not that hard to get into your business like that. And for the tech savvy employee, they could probably really listen in on what you're saying. And you wouldn't even know. They could be one aisle over, literally listening in. And you start to think about that show, that's that's pretty damn creepy. Yeah, there's a lot of, in my field of uh, trucking, there's a lot of companies that have, um, and employees don't know about it, but in, in their system that you log into, mm -hmm. it tracks the keystrokes. So if you're shooting an email to anybody, um, it'll, it'll actually send that copy of whatever you sent to an actual other, whoever's monitoring that, you know? Wow. So if you're dogging somebody out or if you say a curse word and even if you type out the curse word and erase it, it still attracts your keystrokes. Um, wow. Gets where, people in trouble. where was this feature at for the Washington Redskins? <laughs> right. <laughs> This would have saved a certain coach's job and uh, possibly uh, cleaned house without this dragging out in court. Right? Yeah, like I don't think he would have saved his job because he still wrote those things. That's true. So Actually, it would have saved my squad from hiring him because he would have been in hireable from the start. It, well, maybe. I, think he sh I don't think he should have necessarily got fired anyway, but... It is what it is. You know, it's a it's a slippery slope down there. I mean, I know we've talked about it before. And, you know, the Raider fan in me, you know, I'd be willing to, you know, forgive and forget, give him a chance because I see how he interacts with people. I see how he interacts with the players. So I know what's in here and what's in here. Problem is what came out of here, or in this case, off right. the fingertips. But um, – and, and, and it's, unfortunately, it's the price you pay because me, you, and, you know, any other Joe in our jobs, we can't get away with it. No matter how good of a person we are, it's going to cost us. My only thing is I wished and I still wish that it would end up costing some other people in the organization that the NFL was going after in the first place to where nobody has been even slapped on the wrist so far. Right. I just want justice. Don't need him back, but I want justice. That means that everybody well, is possible. You don't need him now. You got what's his nuts from New England. Yeah. Yeah. Josh McDaniel. So yeah, we're we're gonna be running Patriots West here pretty soon. I mean, but you still have Derek Carr, so I don't sleep on Carr. You know, oh, he'll break down eventually. I don't, I don't think so. He's I mean, more of a forward fixer repair daily. No, I, I would not put him in the same category as, I mean, would you say that Ryan Fitzpatrick was better than Carr? Um, no. See, and th that's who I would think would be, you know, that stopgap journeyman. So that means that Carr, next level, is at least a starter. Oh, no, no, no. Carr is a starter. I mean, he's, he's decent. No, Derek no. Carr. Now, would you say. Derek would, Carr, Alex Smith, same quarterback. I can see that. I can see that. But Alex a, Smith is going to get you just so far. Derek Carr is going to get you just so far until y'all get an elite quarterback. Y'all going to be, you know, sucking on the hind tit. Unfortunately. But if you look at the division, I'm going to put Mahomes at number one for obvious reasons. Are you really going to tell me that Justin Herbert is better than Carr? He didn't prove it. And you I would can't say tell me somebody the, is until they prove it. I would say that they're on the same plane. They're the same level. I would Neither agree with one that. of them is worse or better. Now, the ceiling is higher on Herbert. However, as of, if you look at just history, body of work, they're the same, they're the same player. Well, let me ask you <clears throat> this. Why do you believe the ceiling is higher for Herbert? Age, 
um, arm strength, accuracy. Derek Carr's accuracy is better. Mm. Stats don't lie. They do lie because some people will tell you that <laughs> some people will tell you that Dwayne Bow deserves to be in the Chiefs Hall of Fame. No. no. Exactly. And, but if you look at his stats, he's top 10 in Chiefs wide receiver stats. Stats do lie. Uh, that's another argument for another show, but oh, let, we can make it the show. Well, um. All right. I, if, if we're talking about Derek Carr, at this time, he owns almost every Raider quarterback stat. You don't get that many number ones in stats on accident. You have to be somewhat good. And you're talking about a franchise that had Stabler, Plunkett, uh, you know, some really great Blanda, really great, great quarterbacks. So I'd say he's better than average. I'm not going to put him on Brady or Manning level at all. I didn't say he was average. No, no, I, I, I know that. But I'm not ready to just downgrade him and say that, you know, he's worse than, I'm going to say, 20 other quarterbacks in the league. Out of 32 teams, I would put him in the top 10. He may be number 9 or 10. Top 10? Yes. Because if you look at all 32 teams – I can only name eight or nine that are better than him. Quarterbacks or teams? Quarterbacks. Okay. If you just look at the AFC West alone, Mahomes, period. Denver ain't got nothing better. Okay, they do now. We'll say Russell Wilson now. But we're basing it off of what Russell Wilson has done in the past. But I'm going to give you that. We already said with the Chargers, Herbert is not better yet. You did say he's got more upside, but he's not better yet. So right now, we only have two in front of Carr. In the East, the only quarterback that's better is Buffalo's quarterback. You can't tell me the Jets quarterback's any good. You can't tell me that uh, the Patriots quarterback is better, although he does have more upside. That showed. Again, he's on the same tier. Yeah. So, so better, no, same tier. So through through one quarter so of like the league, you got to – Hold I've on, only so got gonna, three quarterbacks better than him. Right, but are you going to say that he's top ten tied with seven other quarterbacks? Seven? I wouldn't say seven. There no, may I be, just threw it. I mean, I just threw it. There may be there. three or four vying for that ten spot all tied up, and I would say that. I'm, I'm going to jump on my computer real quick. I want to. He got. I want to see a list of all the quarterbacks in the league, starting quarterbacks in the league. But keep keep going, so we can still talk. Oh, I was waiting on that list because uh, that's a that's a darn good idea. Um, you know, we went through the AFC East, the AFC West. Uh, in the South, uh, Lamar Jackson has proven that he's not as good as Quat Carr. Carr beat him straight up. Um, he, if he learns to throw and not run, then we got to do it. We'll just story. do it like this. I'll just run down the list. Kyler Murray. Not as good. Better or Proven. worse. Worse. Better or worse or same tier. All right. For the people that are, I'm going to say the same <sighs> tier because okay. Kyler Murray does have that upside. Matt Ryan. Carr is better. Why? Matt Ryan is on the downslope of his career. But he Matt Ryan took his team to a Super Bowl. Yes, and blew a 28-3 to lead. Doesn't Enough matter. He, he's not the only one that blew it. The defense blew it. He wasn't playing defense. He had his team up 28-3. to But he still took his team to the Super Bowl. So I'll give you Matt Ryan on that one then. I can't argue uh, with that. Obviously, Josh Allen. Yeah. Sam Darnold, no. No. Andy Dalton, no. No. Uh, Case Keenum, no. No. Dak Prescott, same no. tier? Same no, tier? because if you look at the stats, yeah, I'll say same tier because they're okay. they on that same plane, but uh, they so, actually so have the exact same two. upside, too. Drew Locke, no. no. <laughs> Jared Goff? No. Else Goff also, would be where he was supposed to be. 
Hold on. But Jared Goff took his team to a Super Bowl. Now, are we saying that ring put, automatically puts you in another level? He didn't get the ring. He went to the Super Bowl. He lost to the Patriots as well, 13 to 10. Well, now you're talking about the old adage, who is better, Marino or Elway? Elway's got the rings. Marino got them there, but never won the ring. But, but who had Marino the stats? got them there in his sophomore year and never went back. Elway was in, what, five of them? One, two? That's true. So that would, I mean, if you just look at body of work, I'll get, I'll, I'll say golf not, not ahead of him. I'll give you that one. Although he has taken his team to the big dance. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, one more, one more on golf. When he was there, they couldn't muster even a single offensive first down in the second half. One touchdown would have won that game. That, I'm not saying that Carr's bad because he lost 24 to 21 to whoever. That's right. not the point. That's not okay. the point. Okay. I don't want to individualize games. It's body of work and where how far they've gone. But we'll keep golf below him. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Aaron Rodgers. Definitely above. Okay. I don't even know who Davis Mills is, so I'm going to leave him alone. <laughs> I don't know either. Okay. Now, here's an interesting one, although I will say Carr's ahead of him. Carson Wentz. Yeah, I'm going to say that, too, because, you know, if we're talking about body of work, Wentz can't stay healthy. True. If he would have stayed healthy, he would have been the quarterback of that Super Bowl. <coughs> uh, Trevor Lawrence, I'm going to say below, but he has a lot of upside potential. Yes. So we're at Patrick Mahomes. So we're at four so far. Yeah. Is that Mahomes guy any good? <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Uh, I mean, he did get beat by the Cincinnati Bengals and through hey, we all interceptions. Did. We all got beat by the Bengals. <laughs> Except for that uh, team. Justin Herbert, we decided that he's going to be tied, right? Yeah. Matthew Stafford? I'm going to say Stafford is better. They were, they were on the same plane until this past year. A team that got Stafford, used him the right way, and went to the Super Bowl. You can't argue that. To a, to a T from no. Miami? No, definitely not. That dude can't even throw an accurate uh, pass down the field, which I still don't understand why Hill decided to go that. <clears throat> right. Here's, here's Derek Carr's mirror image, in my opinion. Kirk Cousins. Really? You think so? Because yeah. I, I always thought Matt Stafford and him were the mirror images. Up to I'm talking about up to this point, you know, where – you know, as far as just what they, um, Kirk Cousins obviously has moved to different, different teams, but yeah. Uh, Matt Jones, we said he's going to be below, but has higher yeah. potential. True. Uh, Taysom Hill, he's a gadget quarterback. He don't yeah. count. Uh, <laughs> old porn stash, Gardner Minshew. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, cars above him. Now, he's still on this list, even though he just retired, but Ben Roethlisberger would have to be above that list. I would go with Big Ben, yeah. Jimmy G? Uh, no, I think Jimmy G was a product of – he got out of New England at the right time, got the fat quarter uh, – got the fat contract with San Francisco, but hasn't lived up to it. Took his team to the Super Bowl. Man, when you look at because we're going with my homes guy, we're going with what you said about body of work. And if we do that, I do have to give Jimmy G the edge. Okay, Russell Wilson, we decided he's gonna have it, right? Yeah, he, he's got the resume. Tom Brady, obviously. Yeah, that dick. <laughs> then the last two, Tannehill. Tannehill, that's a tough one there. Tannehill, he's been in so many situations where he could get over the top, get your team over the top, but he's made the dumb mistake. And that's where he differs with Carr. Carr doesn't make the dumb mistake. Carr sometimes folds under pressure. That's his knock. Define Oops. dumb mistake. He'll throw in a double coverage when he doesn't have to. 
I've seen Tannehill have somebody 10 yards down the field, get the first down. He will try to throw it to his receiver that's double covered down the field. Picked off. Head scratcher. That, that kind of dumb mistake. Carr, I've seen him. He'll see his guy. Not quite sure if he's open. He'll hold on to the ball. Take the sack. Dumb mistake. Okay, so I'm going to pause this conversation and go to another question for you because you're a Raiders fan. Um, Daniel Sorensen, number 49 for the Chiefs, now mm -hmm. plays for the Saints. Yes. Okay. Daniel Sorensen, is he a good, bad, average player? From what I know about it, him, you know, just talking like um, – for example, the uh, first co-host of this podcast, Kevin, he was always down on Daniel Sorensen. Daniel did this, Daniel did that. But at the same time, I've seen Daniel Sorensen um, step up and make big plays from out of nowhere. So I wouldn't say that he's a bad player. I wouldn't even say that he's average. I would say that he's above average. Maybe not great, but he's above average. And that's the answer I expect from a non-Chiefs fan, okay? As a diehard Chiefs fan, Sorensen sucks. <laughs> now, he makes, I'll give him credit, he has made a couple of decent plays, you know? Um, but I do know that he probably has more pick sixes against Derek Carr than any other quarterback he's played against. So when I see that and you say dumb mistakes, if 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 Sorensen can intercept and run it back on a pass you through, you kind of suck. I'm just saying. That's just me. Or but I digress. Or he has a knack of being in the right place at the right time for certain No, nope. he doesn't have the knack to be in the right place at the right time. He 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 wins the lottery, is what happens. Cause I've seen go back to last year when we were playing the Packers and um was it Devonte that just made him whiff on a on a tackle, and dude went right in? Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, I, that we can talk about that later. So I have to agree to you. Th there was eight better than than we decided right there. Just yeah. eight right off the top. So okay, I can see top ten. I'll give that to you. Yeah, and, and you know the difference is you and I went from the first team in the league to the 32nd team in the league, we went through every single starter. Now there may be another argument made for one or two of those, which would push Carr from either the eighth position all the way to the 10th position. I get that too, but he's in that top 10. And a lot of people, when you hear his name or you think of him, you don't see him that way until you do what we did and rationally look at all the numbers. Exactly. So, yeah, he, he's a lot more valuable than what people think. Don't get me wrong. If some stud came out of college next year and we had the chance to get him <clears throat> as, as a Raider fan trying to get over that hump, I'm all for it. Even if it meant that kid would have to hold the clipboard and we keep car for another year, <coughs> I'm all for it because I believe in what um, Josh McDaniels is putting together with this squad and he's doing it for the long term. And, you know, I hate to use his name, but Belichick makes these guys think long term. And that Patriot system, that Patriot way, whatever they call it, next man up mentality, it doesn't matter who you are or how much you get paid. If you can't perform, I'm pulling this guy off the bench and we're going to keep this train going. I have to say, I love that mentality. And if it's going to apply to a running back and a receiver, it damn well should apply to the quarterback. I agree. And I will say that I, you know, I like the next man up mentality as well. The only knock or the only thing I would say as from a position of a fan where you are is to temper um, – your expectation because if you think about it, everybody that's left the new england organization yes nobody hasn't really done anything yeah they've done a little bit here and there but all the coaches have end up flopping um 
you know, the only person to leave New England and do anything was Tom Brady. Yeah. So, you know, just kind of, I mean, I think Josh McGowan's is a phenomenal offensive play caller. I'm no, just not no. sold as a head I, I coach. I will say this. If, if you're talking about success and people that have left New England, the unsuccessful ones, what do they all have in common? They've been on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, I, I want to see, yeah. I want to see what Josh. Charlie Weiss would probably be the first coming of Josh McDaniels. I mean, he, he did good in college. He didn't handle his players when he went to Philly. That's what, that he blew it. He didn't handle that right. Well, I mean, yeah, but even then, I mean, he went to college and coached Notre Dame and Kansas. And yeah, neither one of those. Didn't that do that anything, was a failed experiment you know? in Kansas. And I don't even know why. Um, they, they just wanted a big namer in Kansas. So. Yeah. But so, I'm just saying, even when he went to, to the to Golden Domers, he didn't do nothing. But, but you are right. Most head But coaches when you look at that, that success with the Patriots, who was there for the majority of it? It wasn't Weiss. It was McDaniels. McDaniels was running those schemes. McDaniels was running that offense. Well, well, no. When Weiss was there, they won the first three Super Bowls. Yeah, but McDaniels was the QB coach then, too. I mean, you know, he's been there. He wasn't time. calling yeah. the plays. And I don't care if, if Schmuckatelli Smith was the quarterback <laughs> for Tom Brady. It doesn't matter. You know, not going to give credit. It's like giving uh, – who who's uh, – ah, she's on – Tip of my tongue. The Chiefs offensive coordinator right now. Um, the enemy. Um, yes, thank the you. The enemy. That's like saying that the enemy deserves a credit on how well Patrick Mahomes throws the football. The enemy's a running backs coach. So he has no bearing to him. So the offensive coordinator position is a little bit different. I, and Charlie Weiss did call the plays. Josh Pedano is a great play caller, don't get me wrong. But his first attempt at head coach kind of failed the two. Yeah. So I'm kind of interested. Yeah, I forgot about that. You're right. You're right. I'm, I'm kind of interested in how he handles it with an actual quarterback. Because I think he had, uh, what's his, uh, the dude from Florida. Now, technically, this is McDaniel's third attempt as a head coach. He shit the bed in Denver. but he never really coached for the Jets. Yeah, but he... He didn't run one practice for them. He, he didn't, and he really shouldn't have accepted the job knowing that he wasn't ready for the job because that showed a tremendous amount of immaturity. He did the same thing Bill Belichick did to the Jets. That's true. Belichick did do that. <laughs> I forgot Belichick did that. He sure did. Because Belichick went from Cleveland to the Jets for a hot second and then the Patriots. Yep. But you know what? I think everybody has to fall on their face at least once to oh, get yeah. grasp of what happens. Because if you look at Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll wasn't shit. Where did he coach? Was it was New it England? He? Was, it was okay. Patriots. He was before. He was a stopgap between Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick. You're right. But when he came back and he took over um, for um, what you call it, Seattle. The, Seattle. Yeah. He he built the powerhouse. Andy Reid, they, but, they kept getting to the mountaintop in Philly, but could never get over the hump. And I think Andy got that that refreshed feeling just going to another team. Right, but you also think who who'd you just say the Seattle coach? Uh, what was Pete his name? Carroll. Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll. He, but he left New England and went to USC and won a ton of championships. Oh yeah, yeah. And then came to Seattle. So. You know, he had he was already ready to go, but I do agree with Andy Reid. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not saying the Raiders are gonna suck. I just no, and, and 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 let me just close out like this. As a Raider fan, I do not have visions of Super Bowls dancing in my head right now. Let's not get it twisted. Let's keep it real. This okay. is gonna be a very tough division. Where the difference between the first place team and the fourth place team in this division might only be two games. I agree. That's how tough this division is. We could all win 10 games and only have three people go to the playoffs. That's how tough this division is. I doubt that'll happen, but it can happen. Okay, uh, before we run out of time, I want to go over a couple things real quick. 
All right. Three, Duncan, Krispy Kreme or Lamar's? Who you got? Mm, probably Lamar's. I knew you were going to say that. While, again, I can't argue with that. If I'm getting it fresh off the rack, I'm going Krispy Kreme. Just that nice, warm, sweet taste. That's only if you want a glazed donut. Yeah. <clears throat> but otherwise, I'm going with Lamar's just like you. Um, real quick before we run out of time, because uh, it looks like we got less than a minute. Just want to remind everybody to like, share, subscribe. I know we got a little off script today, but that's okay. That's what we can do here. It's our prerogative. We're totally warped. Exactly. <laughs> um, but everybody, please stay positive, stay blessed. We will see you again next week. Bigger, better, stronger than ever. Show. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate you, brother. And we will see you guys again next week on another edition of Slightly Warped.